Bonjour, uh, good evening, namaste everyone. Uh, my name is Vikash. I'm the Campus France Manager for Mumbai and I will be moderating today's session. So um, whoever has joined, uh, firstly, I would like to welcome uh, all of you uh, to our third webinar of the evening titled, What to Expect from a Business School. Uh, the setup of the webinar is slightly different so, um, you know, instead of uh, taking you through the PowerPoint presentations of the uh, various schools, what we've decided is uh, instead we will have an engaging uh, discussion for the various questions that I will be posing uh, to the panelists. Right. So let me also quickly introduce you all to the uh, three panelists over here. Uh, firstly, we have uh, Miss uh, Judith, uh, who is the who is the International Development Officer at Montpellier Business School. Secondly, we have uh, Ms. Dharani Joshi, who is the Country Manager for Country Manager India for Schema Business School. Good evening, and, everyone. And thirdly, I would like to uh, introduce you all to Mr. Nishit Jain, who is the Country Director India at Grenoble Ecole de Management. Good day. I must say, because I don't know which time zone you are in, so. Great. Now, uh, I'll just give you a brief background on the um, management scenario in France. So it, as a student, you know, if you are someone who is interested in the business world and you would like to develop your managerial skills, well, you know, look no further. France can offer you a whole range of possibilities. Uh, you can choose from a number of different courses and types of institution uh, because as you know, international students are warmly welcomed and you can study from any one of the 1,600 plus programs that are completely taught in English as well, right? And, um, and if we speak about education and management and business specifically, uh, education and management and business is one of the great strengths of the higher education system in France. Um, a master's in management or an MBA from a prestigious French university is globally recognized and featured, uh, it features among the elite quality educational institutions of the world. Um, over 100 education institutions in France have achieved a formal international recognition for their high standards and accreditations like AACSB, Equus, and AMBA. Right, so um, again, I, I would also like to remind the students, you know, so once uh, we are going through the uh, webinar, uh, if you have any questions, you can of course uh, put them in the chat box. And then uh, towards the end, I would highly encourage all the students to go to the booth of the schools and chat with them individually. If you have specific questions that you need to ask, with these uh, schools that we have present over here. All right, now, I would like to first uh, start off the discussion with, um, uh, let's go with Judith. Um, Judith, uh, so my first question to you is, uh, so as a student, right, I, I have uh, so many options available, but what is it that I must be looking at? So on what parameters should students evaluate in shortlisting a good business school according to you? Sure, thank you for this opportunity to, to be part of this webinar. I'm really excited about this. Uh, this. And uh, I graduated myself from the school. So I'm also talking, speaking as a, an alumni of MBS. Um, when you consider to evaluate a good business school, first of all, you need to make sure that you want to study business because some of the students, they, they talk to us and they don't want to study business. So make sure that you know what is business and management. If you don't know, that's why we're here. That, that's our job as well as representative to, to help you and uh, recommend you a good program. Our job is not just to, to make sure that you come to our school, but if you look for a design school, I, I'm not going to tell you to come to our school, for instance. It's the same for engineer, et cetera. I would look first at the programs as well. Um, if you know that you want to study marketing and uh, uh, that you see many programs in marketing, of course, then this is where you're going to have to focus on a specific school. I, I suggest that you select like between three to five school maximum, and it's already a good number. 
Um, so make sure that you, you study well the, the programs that they have. Make sure that you understand the language. So most of the courses, like uh, Vikash said, uh, are taught in English in uh, most of the business schools in France, or at least the ones that are here today. Um, also, I suggest that you look at the rankings, of course, because this is uh, something important. Uh, Vikash mentioned before the accreditations. For those who don't know, it's like a bit of the stars for the hospitality industry. It, it, it enables you to, to have an idea about the quality of uh, um, academic excellence. And uh, you will see as well the rankings um, are quite important for recruiters as well. So I'm uh, with a very good school around me, so this is great as well. Uh, for, for MBS, for instance, we are a part of what we call the Grande Ecole, uh, which is the case of uh, the two other schools with me today, which uh, is like the Ivy League for France, if I can compare that to, to something American that you may know. Also, you'll see that most of the business school, at least the Grande Ecole, they give you the stay back option, because when you come to France, maybe it's uh, for studying, but some of you are, are thinking of, uh, I don't know, continuing your, your European or French experience here. Um, so make sure that uh, this is also an opportunity and you'll see that at a master level, uh, this is a, a possibility for you Indian students to have a stay back option up to one year renewable, meaning that when you come to study, you come uh, with a student visa, then you can stay up to one year renewable uh, under authorization to stay. And then you look for, well, while you're looking for a job and then you will have a work permit visa with your recruiter. Perfect. So I suggest that uh, you do your research well uh, to discuss with, with the students, not just representative, because of course we're going to tell you great things about the school. Uh, but I suggest that you talk with, the, that you speak with the current students, maybe from your country, because for you it's easier as well to discuss, discuss with the, our ambassadors or alumni as well to have an idea of what the experience exactly look like and uh, to see what's the experience of the business school as well. And uh, last point will be to, to look for a nice city in France, we have a, a lot of cities. Of course, Paris is the most popular because it's the capital, but I suggest as well that you look at others. I know that Schema has uh, Paris, but they have other options. And I would strongly suggest that you look for other options in student cities to integrate yourself better. So I know Grenoble and uh, uh, Sofia are really nice and the Montpellier as well. Thank you. Darini, the same question to you as well. Uh, what are your thoughts on uh, the parameters students should look for in shortlisting a good business school? Um, I think, uh, you know, one thing is uh, students should consider is how the placements are, you know, because uh, ultimately all the students go to get a good job opportunities. Of course, so it's very different from how an Indian management schools are where they have on-campus placements. We don't have on-campus placements. We, European business schools usually offer a lot of opportunities like recruitment days, career fairs, etc. So one very important criteria is to know about the, uh, you know, the placement records. Mm -hmm. uh, secondly, uh, ranking, of course, is the important uh, aspect of uh, any institution. Um, and also, uh, at the same time, they have to undergo the details of pedagogy of what the school is offering in terms of electives or the general intensive programs that the school is offering in terms of any specialization, what are the research projects they are interested. Some of them are nowadays interested for PhD programs after masters. So, you know, uh, these are some of the criteria I would say that, uh, you know, a student should uh, shortlist uh, uh, while looking at the institution. Of course, ranking and accreditations are a part of it. Uh, and, you know, what are the other opportunities, uh, you know, in terms of placement records, all these count together for me that you know, students should consider for uh, shortlisting a business school very specifically. And like Judith said that, mm -hmm. you know, firstly, we need to understand whether the student is capable of studying into a management program or not, or th then based on the evaluation, we can suggest them, okay, you can go for a two years management for example, for those who are absolutely not having any work experience or coming from an arts or commerce background or a science background also. Mm -hmm. And uh, then we can, you know, help them to understand, okay, the first year you'll be learning a general management aspect. The second year you go for specialization. And of course, uh, you know, you can go ahead for the institutions which offer the global rotational campus ideas uh, so that, you know, you enhance your global skills, you know, at the same time. And 
uh, also what I feel is, uh, you know, the amount of international students a particular institution offers, you know, because that is what, you know, an international exposure is what every student is looking for. So they should definitely know that what is the international overall international student intake for a particular institution. Right. All right. So Nishit coming to you, why, why should, why should a student look at Grenoble? See, uh, Grenoble is a very interesting school. It's a, in a city which is also known as the Silicon Valley of not just uh, France, but the whole of Europe, mm. with uh, very large uh, major tech players uh, in and around the region. I mean, ranging from Capgemini, Decathlon, which is home to India now, more or less. I mean, Schneider Electric, ST, Microelectronics, uh, and HP having its significant European headquarters in there. So there's a lot of tech which goes in. But what's special about Grenoble is the fact that uh, we look at technology management. So mm -hmm. while uh, there's one side which is creating the technology, the other side, uh, which is how to make that technology work. How do you commercialize it? How do you take it to the world? How do you leverage it? And I think Grenoble has really mastered that art over the years. And uh, being the, I mean, the head of the giant campus, as we say, wherein there is all the engineering schools and other uh, types of uh, different disciplines of institutions, but Grenoble Management School is the one which leads the entire uh, business or the management aspect of that. Also, the other uh, two very unique features about uh, GEM, I would say, as we say, Grenoble Equality Management in short, GEM, is the fact that we are very entrepreneurial. So the mm -hmm. three DNAs, uh, like we say, the three pillars on which the Grenoble is uh, based is the technology management, the entrepreneurship, uh, and the innovation. So with these three, I think uh, we have really done well. And uh, needless to mention, Grenoble has been the first school, I would agree a lot with my colleagues, has been the first school in France, uh, which has uh, really done well in the international aspect. So back uh, nearly three decades ago is when uh, nobody was even thinking about uh, being so international. Grenoble went across the geography and uh, been very international right from the very beginning. So any and every program that you consider at Grenoble or for that matter, I mean, even the city, if you look at it, is uh, very international to the largest extent. And it's been ranked consistently as uh, one of the finest international cities uh, because of very large number of students uh, which come in uh, to study different disciplines in the city. Perfect. Uh, let, me, let me come to Dharani again. Uh, you know, since you also spoke about placements, uh, if you can sort of elaborate on how the corporate relations department is at Schema, how it functions, and uh, how does it help students in finding uh, employment as well? So uh, like Judith had uh, give, spoken in the initial answer that, you know, we have three campuses in France, one in Lille, uh, then in Paris, now we started our own flagship campus and uh, one in Sofia. So all the three campuses have got its own uh, specific, uh, you know, de dedicated career and talent team. Uh, together, they uh, organize uh, twice a year career fair in which they invite around 300 to 400 companies, uh, you know, uh, on that particular two day session where, you know, we, and prior that we always train our students to, you know, uh, on, on these uh, training skills program, skill based program where we teach them how to put a resume in French or cover letter in French, or if it's in English, what exactly to write and what to speak to the recruitment manager in those five to 10 minutes of the elevator pitch that you know you're supposed to speak so one is the recruitment day then we organize business roundtable conferences by several companies and associations in which we involve student community to participate and we organize an informal session uh, you know like an informal networking session between the companies and the students um, then we have company specific days, for example, you know, we have sometimes KPMG coming and giving presentation the whole day to all the management students. That's, that's one aspect uh, where, you know, we have this direct collaboration. Uh, second is through the LM network. We have a database of around 45,000 LM from 150 countries and we give the access of the alum uh, you know network to our students and they can write anytime to any of our alums 
in order to you know uh, ask for an internship or a job opportunity or any kind of mentorship or guidance that they need that's the second way then there are several online uh, portals you know um, where you can uh, look for internship and job opportunities in france for example job teaser is one of them visio talent is one of them and then there are several for which our career and talent team gives a training to the students on you know how to use those particular portals uh, sometimes even internal references of uh, lm's work where you know they just uh see a particular uh, you know for uh, for example on linkedin as well you know you can put it on linkedin and say that okay we are looking for an internship at this particular time and sometimes they just uh, look at the student cv and they get back to us by saying okay i would like to you know hire this particular candidate for an internship or a job program so so that's the, these are the several ways in which you know uh, the career and talent team works but the main idea is always that you have to be as proactive as you can uh you know with the career and talent team for other follow ups and uh, also be a part of uh, all the skill based training programs that they organize because you know they are the one who can give you the possible grooming you go for an international exposure so a lot of things are different from the home country you belong to so right. you you know participating in those skill based training programs is equally equally important so that's that's how particularly schema works great great uh jurif you know you had also explained us about uh, the students having the aps option right of course where they can look for a job opportunity so um while they are on aps uh, does the corporate relations department i mean do, are they still in touch with the students and do they give them the relevant leads uh, which will help them in uh, maybe at least getting a job interview yeah thank you for the question Uh, indeed like uh, I, i believe uh, most of the school have have it right now uh, we have a career center that is in charge of helping the student from the start of their studies at mbs or uh, whatever the school it is uh, to help them with the, some people who are consultants in charge of helping them to promote their resume cover letter so they'll be giving them some tools to promote themselves on linkedin on the and helping them to be active like uh, darren said before in their search it's not that like we give them the the all the jobs opportunities and mm. once they graduate they are not launched in the nature if i can say that there will be still uh, some of our students or maybe alumni but we have an association in charge of uh, of alumni as well meaning that uh, in between these two periods they might be looking for an internship so they will be in, in touch with our career center and we have two a uh, dedicated consultant specifically for our msc programs they are very specialized with our international students and they deliver very relevant content regarding what's going on in the french market but also european and international markets and then uh, we also have our alumni association which is part of the school who is in charge uh, of uh, well um, putting into relation um, students and uh, future well alumni or future alumni if i can say that we have a lot of also events right now it's all virtual so i know people can be tired of webinars but uh, of course this is the only option we have right now but usually we have like uh, after works if i can say that uh, Uh, in several cities because we we have uh, several branches in France but also in the world where alumni and future graduates can meet the the, the people to to network because this is also part of what uh, grande école is uh, meaning the the network as well so we don't uh, let our students uh, by themselves into the nature they keep receiving our emails and all the info we have so that can be some tutorial to help them with the resume or how to um, reach this this specific company or where to to start their career etc uh, etc et so many information while to while being a student but also when they graduate perfect all right nishit uh, so let me just uh, frame the question slightly different so uh, once the students graduate from grenoble in which specific sectors uh, do they start working in since you have so many programs to offer so uh, i'm in mean, the trend uh, we've seen that now uh, it's uh, pretty uh, across sectors mm -hmm. so it would be very hard for an institution which is uh, size of uh, gem which has its uh, footprint across different geographies uh, and uh, having uh, range of more than a uh, dozen programs uh, wherein there are specialized programs in uh, finance marketing luxury management consulting and uh, others and on the contrary we also have a uh, general management programs so mm -hmm. it would be wrong on my part to say that we focus on two domains and that's it i think uh, you have to also understand that today the industry is uh, 
also a function of where the candidate is coming from. So I'll just track back and link the previous question to this one. When you talk about careers, uh, we go a step further uh, while we do all of the things that most schools do, we also do one very interesting thing, which is the mapping of the skill sets uh, which the student has. Okay. Often the uh, fact is that students uh, believe that I have done an MBA and so has uh, my colleague, but mm -hmm. both come from very diverse backgrounds and different levels of experience and different uh, knowledge. So they can't be, I mean, positioned uh, at the same point in any organization. So that skill mapping with what your strengths are and what your weaknesses are is a very, very crucial. It's kind of a realistic uh, mapping, a real reality check so that they succeed. I mean, it would be foolish on my part to sort of uh, be, uh, uh, you know, just uh, coming out of an MBA and trying to be an executive director in a large company just because my colleague who is also an uh, MBA, but he had about 10 years of experience behind him and now he could yeah. probably position himself at a mid middle management senior director or a manager. So I think that mapping and understanding is very crucial. Having said that, uh, some of the areas wherein we focus uh, largely are in the energy space. Uh, we've been very concerned uh, about the sustainable aspect. So the f one of the future areas for a lot of students who may be listening is also about the climate, environment, and the sustainability. While mm -hmm. there is a vaccine for COVID, there is no vaccine for climate. And management schools have a big endowment on them and a big responsibility to make the future leaders uh, being purpose-driven and also looking at the sustainability aspect that how do they address those concerns? So each of our programs, uh, whether whatever the name may be, would have a strong uh, aspect on uh, sustainability. Uh, it is also, I mean, uh, if I look at the 40,000 alumni, I can uh, vouch on the fact that most people uh, who would be coming into institutions uh, such as uh, Grenoble or Schema or uh, MBS or many of the large Grand Ecole institutions in France, uh, any and every sector mm -hmm. that you would like to work on would be covered by some alumni or the other. So whether it is aerospace, whether it is automotive, whether it is uh, cosmetic, consulting, banking, finance, uh, sports, leisure, travel tour. I mean, uh, in fact, Grenoble has been lucky because it's also one of the sports cities for those of you who like to, you know, enjoy, which I must encourage because uh, life is no fun without, you know, having some fun. So you must uh, also take into account when you're choosing the place, uh, Grenoble is a ski destination of the world. I mean, pretty much uh, with hosted Winter Olympics in 68 and 92, and uh, that also attracts a lot of students. So I think it, it really depends on uh, what the role is. And uh, we have a campus in Paris, which is pretty vibrant. We have a campus in Grenoble, which is uh, huge. Uh, I mean, because it runs into several uh, towers and number of students and so on and so forth. Great, amazing. Uh, Judith, let me ask you this uh, question. So um, as a student, if I am interested in, let's say, picking my own electives, so would I have the opportunity of designing the particular electives or is it a fixed curriculum the students have to follow? Uh, so most of our courses, we have the Bachelor and the Masters of Science and Master in Management. So we have, a um, first of all, the, the first years of the track, for instance, the Master in Management is a two-year program, like, uh, you know, other the school, I believe. The first year will be general, and here the students will have uh, courses that are mandatory. Why? Because we want them to have uh, the basics, because some of them come from different backgrounds, and they may have never studied finance or accounting before. So we want all the students to be kind of equal, if I can say mm -hmm. that. For the first year uh, they may have sometimes some electives but this is nothing too intense because we don't want them to be specialized directly the first year so the first year it's going to be mainly mandatory courses they might have the chance to, to choose for instance the second language they can study but usually this is french that they study because they don't speak french and it's important for them to speak french and the second year of the program, this is where they can choose the specialization they go for. Same for the MSc. The first semester will be, uh, well, they'll be choosing a specialization for the MSc. And inside the MSc they chose, they'll be able to choose uh, a specialization uh, again um, below the, the specialization. So they'll be able still to add some uh, touch and to orientate their, their profile. However, uh, it's not like they're going to be able to choose this course and this course and they like at the restaurant, if I can say that. Uh, it will be mandatory courses at first and then they'll be choosing a specialization where they have given courses already, where, where they have mandatory courses already to follow to make sure that all the students uh, will have the same type of, uh, of background when they go out of, of school. I see. 
done any? So is it is it similar at Schema as well? In terms yeah. of customization, yes. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, quite uh, similar to what uh, Judith said, where you know if we have like MIM is two years, MEC we offer for two years for freshers and one year for work experience professionals. So the first year is always a very strong generic aspect where you know we make them understand the basics and the foundation. And then the second year they can, when they are opting for the specialization, we give them some liberty to uh, you know, choose their electives. Apart from that, we make them give some additional, uh, you know, additional electives for the year in case you know their marks are a little bit weak for any of uh, their exams and electives. So it can cover up in a way. So yeah, it's a little bit of uh, you know on a very very similar lines, uh, you know, with schema also. Okay. And of course, there are internships, uh, you know, to be a part of mandate part of the curriculum. Uh, which is not practiced much in Indian business schools, but in France, uh, you know, it's always a part of the curriculum uh, where you get credits for it. And, you know, you have to put all your learnings of your academic uh, classroom into your practical aspect while you're doing your four months to six months of internship and make a report of 30 pages, submit it to the school, and then, then you get a validation of your uh, degree, you know. So that's, that's also a part of, uh, you know, studying. Uh, at, at whether it's a schema or uh, Montpellier or Grenoble, I'm sure about that. Yes. Perfect, perfect. Let me ask this uh, one, uh, one of the most uh, asked questions by students, right? So uh, starting with Nishit, um, if I am looking at Grenoble as an option for myself, so, you know, at, when you're recruiting a student, what are some of the qualities that you look at? See, one of the most essential aspects, uh, which uh, most often uh, those who are not so well prepared miss is the fact that they run after the, you know, a uh, lot of friends uh, who would uh, tell them many good things uh, that you Herd should mentality. Uh, yeah, you should do okay. this, 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 this. And uh, uh, while they may not have those things. So what is very crucial, I mean, I must say, is to be original. We are here to listen to your story. You need to link it up and align it with what you've done in the past and what you are doing now and how it will help you launch into your future career. Is it making a right choice? I mean, is the program that you've chosen is really aligned with those career ambitions? So that's the key which we want to judge. Of course, they need to have the IELTS and the GMATs and the GREs depending on the program that they choose. They also need to have referees in place. Uh, they need to be original. But uh, again, I must emphasize also on the fact that they need to, uh, we, we look at holistic applications. So it is not like uh, I, if I have a 90 percentile or a great score, uh, is why I'll be getting to Grenoble. No, I think that's not the right assumption. Or if I'm too uh, weak in my academics, but I'm great in soccer, for instance, or another uh, trade, dancing or musician or something. I think a lot of uh, weightage is given to a, a diversified uh, background. And the more you can reflect on that, uh, the better it is. Often people uh, have all of these things, but they're not able to communicate it so well. So I think uh, that's important. And the second important thing is uh, do not cut, copy, paste. I mean, you may be applying to maybe several schools, but uh, this is uh, plagiarism, which is just not acceptable, at least uh, in most of the good schools uh, that are speaking today. I mean, uh, we have very, very strong uh, plagiarism software. So you won't be surprised that you may have picked up a couple lines from the Google. You may have picked up certain things from your friends or you have asked, uh, let's say, your friends to write for you. We have a psycho testing built into the online application. You may not realize, but we know what you're thinking and what you could think and how the output would be. And therefore, if there's a contradiction in any of these things, uh, you would be straight away refused. So what I'm trying to say that uh, don't worry about how good or bad it is in terms of what the application you do. The important is to be original, be yourself. Listen to everybody, read everything, uh, hear from everyone, but then do your own bit yourself. And uh, we are there. I mean, most schools, at least for France, I can say have their offices in the country in India. You can consult the respective office for the most legitimate and the uh, real information than being misguided by things that you may hear or read in the social media particularly. Right, and, uh, and of course, uh, also reach out to your closest Campus France manager as well. I mean, Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. I think uh, yeah. even better because uh, I mean, France is blessed with uh, 
nearly more than a dozen uh, campus france offices vikas is an excellent person i mean he can give you a much better overview and each office has been i mean designed in such a fashion that they can give you quality service uh, at your door uh, i mean in your city pretty much uh, in most major cities we are there perfect jurith uh, what are your thoughts what is what is it that you look at when re recruiting a student i would uh, i would agree of course with nishit here when he mm -hmm. said that uh, we have to be ourselves so everyone is already taken like oscar what said and of course you have to be yourself don't copy whatever um your friend is doing because uh, this is not what we're interested in of course like we said before we will have some admission uh, tests like uh, looking at your grades from before your resume and you'll be taking some tests with us as well um, and be taking as well the English test if uh, required according to the program. However, we have an interview as well, and I believe this is the case as well for the other schools here. Um, and this is the interview that is the most important grade in our case uh, for, your, for your final average. So uh, the interview weighs 30 and the rest weighs 15 to give you an idea, so the double. Meaning that if you don't do well at the interview, uh, you don't get it, basically. And how to get to the interview and how to succeed your interview well, you have to be yourself, and it's true that it can be like a easy advice, if I can say that. However, we can see some students who are trying to invent something and to pretend like they're someone else, and this is not what we're looking for. We're also looking for students with an emotional intelligence who, are look, uh, who, who know who they are, and we know that you're young, but I'm sure you have some great experience from your past, not just professional, but also the fact that you're playing cricket, or maybe you have a YouTube channel, or uh, I saw someone who sent me a video yesterday, she, she sent me videos on YouTube, that, uh, and she's a prospective student who is doing like a, a YouTube uh, video channel about uh, uh, inspiring people and all, and I really liked it because it could, we could see that she has strong, uh, strong communication skills, etc., which is something we're looking for in the school as well. We also look for adaptable students and students who are able to get out of their comfort zone. I believe the first step uh, about uh, coming to France being an Indian student is already getting out of your comfort zone because of course you're going out of a to a country where you may not speak the language or maybe you do, but it, this is not your culture. And this is already a great step and uh, you'll see that you will be, be uh, enjoying this experience even if sometimes you might be frustrated. So. Uh, someone who is ready to get out of his comfort zone, very curious, and I would say also hard worker, but this is uh, the case for all the schools in the world, so this is a, a, normal, uh, a normal criteria. So be yourself and uh, be ready for new experiences, I would say. Perfect. Um, Darni, so my question to you is, um, so why do you feel uh, management degrees are still relevant and how do you foresee the market for the graduates? Uh, well, I, I myself, uh, you know, just to give a little bit of uh, personal background, you know, for, for a reference of the answer, I'm myself an arts graduate who decided mm -hmm. to pursue management after some work experience because I was looking to, uh, you know, diversify uh, my career into something uh, which is related to international business or uh, you know something on a much international profile with my background of arts so uh, definitely uh, management degrees have a lot of weightage especially the international uh, you know if you are taking an international mba or an international masters abroad it has more weightage because the degrees are internationally recognized you can fetch a good job nowadays even the, there, are, there are these great concepts about the international startups as well um, but but you know it is not meant for everybody it, it's not that, okay, today, uh, you know, one of my friend is uh, studying management, so I should be fascinated by it and go ahead. No, it's not meant for everybody. So definitely there has to be some kind of, uh, you know, uh, evaluation or an explanation self explanation self understanding about whether you will be fitting into that particular aspect of uh, studying a management program or not uh, of course the degrees are relevant uh, you know it's uh, it it gives you a lot of understanding about yourself uh, puts you onto a leadership position during your studies uh, you know you meet people from different countries uh, you know you understand uh, yourself much better uh, but i feel that uh, a management degree is not meant for everyone. Uh, maybe it's it's only for people who are looking to, you know, have a career growth or diversify their career, uh, you know, with a proper guidance. That's that's where I feel that, you know, it's a little 
contradicting symptoms. I see. Nishit, the same question to you. Why, why so, would you tell a student the same? Yes. Yeah. So, see, my take is slightly uh, different. I would say management degrees are here to stay. And let mm. me uh, illustrate it better. It's here to stay because when you run across uh, any industry, whether it is services, manufacturing, uh, you go to anything that you do in your life, uh, in a day-to-day -day life, I mean, uh, there would be that organization which is being managed. And therefore, there'll be always an opportunity for you to sort of be in that uh, ecosystem. Also, management uh, teaches you something which is uh, thought leadership, which is very crucial. I mean, tomorrow, I mean, you'll have a lot of uh, robots, a uh, lot of AI, a lot of automation that would happen. But uh, who makes these robots think? I mean, the strategic thinking, what should be the next kind of product or a service to be offered? I think all of those things are largely the visioning exercise or the brainstorming exercise, as we may say, is a function of what a management graduate is uh, trained to be. Another very important feature of a management graduate is the fact that they can be very agile. So today with pandemic coming in, I think a lot of uh, decisions, uh, how to manage and run the business and uh, without going uh, bleak or getting up, uh, bouncing back from the red line where you touched. I mean, it is uh, about the ability to relearn. I think that something is also taught uh, or rather embedded into most of the management graduates that how they can uh, you know, learn from the situation and revive and how to do, manage the problem solving, the creative aspect. So all of these things, if this is what resonates uh, with your interest areas, then I think, yes, management uh, is the area you could consider. If uh, you are more in the research uh, slash, uh, I mean, uh, dance or I mean, liberal arts or politics, then maybe it's, it's not uh, the best. But then if you are looking at managing the, I mean, uh, let's say a liberal arts academy for that matter, or managing uh, I mean, photography business for that matter, then yes, management has a very important role to play. So it really depends on which side of the function you want to be. Perfect. So I was just looking at the um, uh, questions. We've uh, almost answered all of them in uh, our discussions. Uh, what I would again uh, reiterate uh, the fact is that the, the students who would like to ask uh, specific questions to the institutions, I would request them to please uh, go to their booth and under the chat option, you can ask your specific questions. They will be more than happy to answer whatever queries that you have, right? And um, lastly, uh, I think we're almost uh, close to the end. Um, before we leave, uh, would you like to give uh, any closing statements uh, starting with Judith? Well, thank you so much for this opportunity and I uh, hope you will be, well, students will be convinced about business school if that's uh, what you're looking for. If that's not what you're looking for, it's okay. We don't need just uh, managers in the world. We also need uh, other type of functions. But uh, like we said before, uh, management schools will be a great choice. Um, even for people who are kind of lost, if I can say that, for instance, me before coming to a management school, I didn't really know what I wanted, but I knew I wanted to work at an international scale and uh, speak languages. That's all I wanted to, to, to do. And then I, I found out like in management schools, you'll be learning new skills, not just like uh, hard skills like uh, accounting, finance, etc., but also what we call soft skills, where you learn communication skills, uh, which will help you not just in your professional life, but also personal life, if you happen to have a, uh, an association or things that you would like to run on your own, etc. Also, if you wish to have more information about MBS itself, so the school, uh, feel free to join at the at our booth. I'll be with uh, one of our Indian students. You don't see him right now because he's not with me. Is it? He is home. Sorry, but uh, we are home office. As you can see, we cannot go to school or to India yet for on my own. Perfect. Thank you so much. Yes. Nishit, a quick closing statement by you, and then we'll end with uh, Dalin. Sure. So uh, students, I would just say that uh, studying in France is a memorable experience, I can tell you, and make the most of it. I mean, you must uh, not forget the fact that uh, France offers a very high quality education. Uh, you check any metrics uh, you want. 
uh, you can google it up uh, go to ft global rankings the rankings qs rankings uh, shanghai jiaotang rankings or any other rankings that you want to consider and you will see bulk of the population on the north of those rankings would be french institutions across disciplines be it management engineering uh, arts uh, humanities whatever you look so france definitely has a high quality uh, education in offering it is also very affordable education when you compare the quality uh, of the high quality being of uh, provided at a very uh, reasonable uh, cost i think it makes the experience even better and uh, lastly i would say that uh, france is also a country which is uh, geographically and strategically located uh, with uh, germany on one side italy on the other spain and uh, belgium and uh, in close proximity to uk so you can really travel well which is also part of the learning experience because uh, once you're there as a student you can really benefit from uh, uh, several uh, sops and scholarships uh, from the mm -hmm. french government uh, which uh, i mean you can always consult uh, the campus france office or us i mean for some of them uh, because you can travel really at cheap uh, prices and experience what france has in uh, offering so all in all i think it's going to be a great experience to be in france this uh, irrespective of whatever you choose to be doing there perfect nishit darni a quick closing statement from you as well yeah uh, firstly i would like to thank campus france and institut francais uh, for this wonderful opportunity you gave to all three of us for being a panelist uh, thank you vikash for being such an excellent moderator i don't think so anyone can do it such a great job that you do uh, secondly for all the students uh, please feel free to reach us on the booth uh, today and uh, if you have any queries campus france is always there to help you uh, france is a great destination to study like said by nishit and jyotit also and uh, all the best for all the opportunities uh, and everything that you all pursue in your career perfect thank you so much darini um so again so a kind reminder to all the students to please go to the school booths and uh, click on the chat feature to start your conversation and of course uh, you know we have uh, our last webinar uh, coming up in about 3 minutes um you can view our uh, final webinar uh it's titled scholarship internship and employability in france so please uh, make use of this platform and I, i i wish the students all the best and to the panelists thank you very much merci et bonsoir merci thank you thank you all thanks thanks for everything bye